Дольче Дунков, ты еще увидишь, как из-за твоей продажной глупости, Анна Лена Бербок, Берлин будет гореть. Надо как-то сделать так, чтобы американские солдаты начали гибнуть. Да мы сотрем порошок Варшаву и Вильнюс. Почему мы признаем Францию и ее границы? Как я хочу посмотреть, чтобы Урсулиха фон дер Ляля корчилась с куском беспилотников в глотке. Когда на сегодняшний день мы говорим, что война будет безъядерной, мы, наверное, лукаем. По количеству надуш населения, правда, Канада ее опережает, но Америка – это мировая держава подобрела. Я сейчас требую спалить Берлин. Welcome back to Russian hate speech, where we break down the most absurd and dangerous rhetoric coming out of Russia's propaganda machine. Today's episode dives deep into some particularly disturbing quotes that show how the Kremlin's narrative is still firmly rooted in threats and intimidation. Let's start with a quote from Russian Lieutenant General Evgeny Buzhinsky, who threatens the United States. In general, I believe it's time for us to deliver a very painful blow to the Americans. Either deactivate one of their satellites or bring down a strategic drone into the waters of the Black Sea, so they are forced to reconsider how they proceed with escalation. Here Buzhinsky wants to intimidate the world, especially the US. But here's the reality. These threats only serve to highlight how desperate Russia is becoming. They are not bargaining from a position of strength, but rather trying to cover up their own strategic failings by talking tough. Now we move to former pro-Russian Ukrainian politician Spiridon Kilinkarov. By and large, the West lost its fear in the 90s, and since then we haven't even tried to instill it. So why should we be surprised that they are no longer afraid? Now we'll have to take action to restore the status quo and make it clear that we are still a force to be reckoned with. We have the capabilities and the resources. Not that we want to use them, but to protect our national interests if it becomes absolutely necessary. Sooner or later we'll have to do it. Otherwise they will never take us seriously again. We've been too accommodating with them. Kilinkaro is stuck in a Cold War mindset, thinking the only way to gain respect is through threats and force. The fact that he sees this as the only path forward shows just how dangerous this mindset is. To him, peace is weakness and intimidation is strength. Lastly, Let's listen to chief Kremlin propagandist Vladimir Solovyov recite what sounds like the motto of Russia's imperial quest in Ukraine. We will destroy all Nazis and free the Ukrainian people from the terrible satanic yoke. Our cause is just, and victory will be ours. If you have doubts, study the history of your ancestry. Everyone who stood with Russia triumphed and those who stood against it found themselves on the wrong side of history, crushed by the march of world progress under the boot of the Russian soldier. Here, the Kremlin's favorite narrative is on full display, the idea that Russia is on a righteous mission to save Ukraine from Nazis. This absurd claim has been a cornerstone of their propaganda since the invasion began, and it's used to justify any atrocity committed by Russian forces. The notion of a satanic yoke is a classic example of how they demonize their enemies to rally domestic support. Behind all this tough talk is a regime struggling to maintain its grip, both domestically and internationally. Russia is isolated and its economy is floundering. These propaganda sound bites are meant to distract from those harsh realities. But no amount of grandstanding will change the facts on the ground. Thank you for joining us on Russian hate speech. And be sure to tune in for the next episode as we continue to unpack the dangerous and deceptive words from Russian propagandists.